What the? Behind the cupboard door, my mum and dad killed my only friend. I will never forgive them. Reese. Okay, so uh, Darren and the man behind the mask. Amir. Amir and Dennis. Okay, right, I'm going to talk to Darren first. I'm not ignoring you. I'll just speak to you soon. Okay, okay. Uh, all right, I do like uh, a good new fashioned mockumentary. Uh, very, very well done. Uh, what inspired the penis nose? Uh, wow, I, I couldn't tell you where it came from. Some dark place in, in the imagination about 2 a.m. in the morning. But what I should say is that um, there was a script to this. It was about two and a half pages long. It was kind of funny, I thought. Uh, on the first day of filming, the script just went out the window two minutes into, into the production because of a fantastic improv performance by Amir. Um, so maybe I should feel the same question to you. Uh, yeah, where did it come from? Uh, it came off the page. It wasn't supposed to be there until I read the last line of the script, uh, by which point I spilled my coffee all over, the, all over it because I was having breakfast at the time. And I just, he, he'd just been doing this in two in the morning, you know, he just sent me the script and I thought, oh, here we go, here's a script. And I kept reading it and he kept saying, this man's got a balaclava, he's got a balaclava. And I thought, what's, what's wrong with him? Just pretty much like the film, it just kept taking me along. And until the last moment, it said, he's got a penis for a nose. And I want my coffee. Um, and I thought, we've got to make this film, this is good. Brilliant, okay. Uh, nice. Uh, again, like, like we were saying before during the intermission, um, you, you never know what you're going to get at Kino Shorts. Everything's different. Very, very special. Um, okay, so I quite liked how the mask was made out of a pair of pants. <laughs> if you want to grab the other mic, that would be grand. Um, was it a pair of pants that had been sewn strategically? Literally, it was the first thing that came up on eBay when I searched for Balaclava. <laughs> and it was the cheapest. So I went, fantastic, let's have those. Not thinking that, that, in fact, they look like a pair of underpants and that would kind of underscore the whole thing. So it's completely by accident that that happened, but yes, they do look like a pair of pants. <laughs> And how was wearing that for you, Amir? Uh, I've never worn a pair of pants on my face. Uh, not that I would admit to, anyway. Uh, no, they, they were very comfortable. Um, although it did get a bit snotty, I've got to say, because there, there was a bit of method to that. Um, he, one of the parts of the script said that I had a nasal voice. So obviously when I was playing with the character, I was holding my nose, and I thought, how are we going to do it on the final thing? So I should put some um, earplugs into my nostrils. <laughs> and if you've ever done that for any length of time, your nose starts running. So in between takes, I had to take them out and snot all over the place, uh, which wasn't very nice. But that was, that was the suffering I had to do, uh, which is kind of funny, really. And what is acting without suffering? Have you to have say. to suffer for your acting. Indeed. Indeed. Um, what I thought was quite interesting was at the end of the credits, and. Um, from a PR point of view, and also from a filmmaker's point of view, particularly if you're an independent, um, you crowdfunded. Yeah. You used Indiegogo, very good yeah. tool. There are others out there. You can use Kickstarter as well. Uh, a, what made you use Indiegogo? And B, can I ask you how much you raised? Yeah, sure. Uh, okay, the reason we went with Indiegogo rather than Kickstarter is because Kickstarter hadn't launched in the UK yet, uh, whereas Indiegogo had UK support. So that, that was just, that, that's why we went with Indiegogo. Uh, we raised uh, just under 350 quid. We asked for 500 US. We got 350. Um, but that has meant that we've got it out to festivals and we just couldn't have done that without, without those funds. Um, and I think the thing is that making the film was, was a doddle. You know, the, the budget was 15 quid. Um, it's getting it out there and getting it seen by audiences, which is, is the hard thing. And, and so Indiegogo was great for that. And you know, thanks to all the people that, that helped. Because it, you know it's, it's being seen because of that money, which is fantastic. 
All right, cool. So Indiegogo is a force of good. Are there any questions from the audience about this film? Come How on. Did the penis? What was, where did the penis come from? <laughs> oh, that's a good question. If I tell you, I'll have to shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't kiss and tell. Oh, no, oh, that's not right. <laughs> The size was important because we, we figured that if, if it was erect, um, it would um, go past his, well, it would completely distort the vision uh, and he might knock somebody over as he turns around. <laughs> so we had to have the right length so it wouldn't be seen under the balaclava. So there was a lot of maths to this, so we, had to, we had to do a lot of measuring. Uh, Any other questions? Were you, um, were you not tempted to make it a bit of a polemic about reclaiming the balaclava as a piece of headwear? That's heavy stuff. <laughs> we, did, we did have a scene where uh, Amir's character is supposed to walk down the main street and we were just, I, I figured that people would just react to him as they saw him, but... Um, but I chickened out because it was, it was the day after that guy had gone into cinema and shot everyone in a balaclava. And I think a Middle Eastern man wearing a balaclava <laughs> walking down Disbury Village is going to raise a few alarms, so I, I actually said I'm not doing that. Because, I'll be here right now telling my story. I'll be like somewhere else wearing orange, you know. Not mentioning names, right? Cool. Well, that was quite a deep question. But I'm glad you asked it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, so, uh, Dennis. Um, behind the cupboard door, lovely, lovely story, absolutely lovely. I like to think it's more acceptable Harry Potter. I apologise if you're a Harry Potter fan. Um, but that was lovely. Is it based on anything personal? Did you have a snail friend? <laughs> um, no, I think it was. It, it's more about sort of highlighting a, a possible part of child abuse that might not be very well recognised about sort of people who have children because they feel the need to have children and then sort of modern day constraints get in their way and they sort of kind of forget about the child and the child ends up having to sort of bring itself up because all they do is argue because maybe they possibly had a child to, to help make this this relationship work for them and they've kind of forgotten that he exists so he just sits in the cupboard and his only little friend is is a snail and and and, and, and yeah, I think it was just, it was, it was kind of, the snail was just a metaphor for him having just something, anything. It could have been an imaginary friend, it could have been anything, but in this case it was Alan the snail. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love uh, human names for creatures, I think it's great. My friend's got a, a dog called George, which I think is quite lovely really. Um, okay, so the snail's a metaphor for kind of uh, his loneliness and the way that he's being neglected by his parents. Um, you've done it with quite good humour actually, which is something that's quite rare and something that's extremely hard to do. Um, was this something that became apparent while you were filming or was it something right back in the script that, that you wanted to highlight? Um, it, was, it was something that, that, that I wanted to do from the beginning because I think that if you're going to sort of um, bring up a kind of a child abuse thing, the, the easy thing to do would be to kind of make it very melodramatic, very sad, very kind of like an NSPCC uh, 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 advert and and actually there is, there had to be humour in there to kind of highlight the, the, the fact that it was going on and the, the, the fact that the, the adults that were outside and we couldn't see their faces was, was meant to be that it could be any, any parentage, it could be any background, anything and you know they were, they were arguing about bleeding a radiator and this, this, this young boy had so much insight, so much sort of, um, uh, he had a worldliness that they just weren't clued into at all. Um, and they had no idea about this. So it's, it was more about the sort of wisdom of children and the, and the stupidity of adults. And I think that's possibly where the, where the comedy came from. Um, also, to add to that as well, the, um, the, the argument between the parents was, was completely improvised. Um, two amazing actors, Gene Hall and Andy O'Brien. Um, I basically kind of put them in front of a microphone and gave them a few pointers. And I, I think they just they used parts of their own marriage to just just kind of just get it all out there and just scream at each other. And and, and I think one of my favourite lines is 
um, where 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 she's where he's he's going. You drink a lot, and she goes. I only had one bottle, and he goes every night. And it's just it's, it's just yeah yeah. That was, that was a lot of fun. Quite a gem, really. So here you go, uh, Dennis. Available for cathartic marriage counselling if you need it. <laughs> um, brilliant stuff. Uh, okay, so what did you film on? Really, really good quality. Was there any grading as well that kind of had like a warm yeah. feel to it? Yeah, um, uh, we filmed on a, a Canon 7D. Um, I'm so not technical, so that's possibly about as as, as far as I can go with the questioning. Um, but on kind of sort of on prime lenses, and yeah, we did a bit of grading afterwards to make it look kind of. Sort of, sort of warm like a family home, but then very dark in the cupboard, um, and and yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> Grand. Uh, and where did you find the little lad? He was really cute. Lorenzo. Lorenzo. Lorenzo was in one of my uh, uh, first films, Skinny Legs, and he was such a fantastic character, like on set, um, and and like he just entertained a lot of us. And um, since since then he's gone on to do so many so many great things. He's mum in the audience tonight, I believe. Alison, are you still are you still knocking around? Oh. No, no. Um, um, Lorenzo's in in uh, what's it called? Young Van? Young Van? Dracula. Young Dracula. And um, in with the Flins? Yes. Yes. And so he's gone on to do really really good stuff. I'm actually quite envious envious of his career. <laughs> um, so yeah, he's 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 just fantastic. And and you know. It, with you know the whole thing about sort of working with animals and children and you know the, the, the two things that you should sort of stay away from honestly the dog sat and stayed it did what it was meant to do um lorenzo was sort of reminding people um excuse me uh, didn't that have some lettuce in it earlier on like should you not notice that and and, uh, and and i didn't have this jump on earlier on so he's honestly possibly one of the best actors i've worked with actually <laughs> Great stuff, so a continuity editor and an actor in one. Absolutely. Right, little talent. All right, okay, so are there any questions from the audience? Yes. So what inspired the style? Because it reminds me of, you know, Amelie, that kind of, that was like my job. It's obviously a lot like that darker Amelie, but the kind of fun elements of it, the, the, the softness of it. I must... inspired you to it, the, the style of it. I must confess that I've not seen Emily, oh, yeah. which is, I know, it's a, gasp, it's a gasping one, it's a gasping one. Um, 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 this sounds so, uh, but I dreamt this story and woke up and wrote it, and I, that was it. That was the first draft, and that was what we we shot and did. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a dream. I was kind of sort of racking my brain for weeks. It was the, it was my one of my final projects at, at uni, um, and and and. I was racking my brain, brain for weeks trying to do a shorter film because all mine seemed to be sort of like, like over 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes sort of thing. And I was like, I need to do a short film, I need to do a short film. And then went to bed one night and then woke up and just scribbled it down. And then wrote it the next day and that was it. There we are again, it's that writer's rush. Yeah. It does exist. <laughs> are there any other questions? I believe there's an alternate cut floating around with a different narrator. What can you tell us about that? Um, originally, originally going back to what I we was saying earlier on about sort of uh, one of the themes was sort of trying to highlight the the wisdom of children and the and the stupidity of adults. Um, so originally, I had a, a, an adult voiceover for for Peter, um, for the young boy, um, and and. I'd say about 40% of the people that I tested it in front of liked it, and 60% went, I just don't understand it, I don't understand it. The point to, to, to the adult one was at the end, when he looks in the bin and he goes, I will never forgive them. I think that was when it was meant to kind of go, ah, but uh, yes, I've done it for commercial reasons, I've sold out a little bit. <laughs> um, uh, but again, using, using Lorenzo, it just brought a, a, another layer to it, and 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 a, and a sweeter innocence actually that, that that it didn't have before. So it's 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 a good evolution. Cool. Uh, any other questions? Yes, I see a hand. Uh, part of those dolly shots. Is, is it the dolly shots where it's sort of moving kind of slowly across the? That's right. Yeah. Thing? Yeah, I, I, I thought they made it look really classy. Uh, what, what were you doing? Yeah, we had um, we had like um, uh, an old sort of seventies. Uh, I think it's called an Ellie Mac, um, and like a few few uh, 
lengths of track and and we basically um, the cupboard um, it was just a big room and and then the the, the art director Rhiannon and uh, Clifford um, just made kind of two sides and just filled it with loads of crap that you'd put in a cupboard and it just looked amazing and and yeah the the, 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 the nice tracking shelves were one of the ones that I was really pleased with actually yeah I'm, I'm so you should be <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, I guess one final question. Um, where was the location? It looked like a really lovely house. Um, we were so lucky with that location. Um, uh, the, uh, I, I went to the Manchester College and um, we suddenly found out, they only told us in the final year that they had this amazing building where um, they, they, they do training for, I think it's for sort of like technical uh, building and things like that. And, and basically this, this building has been renovated by, by students. Um, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful building where they hold conferences now and things like that. And and the producer Lucy Lincoln um, went there once, and she was like, "We need to film something here." Uh, and then showed me it, and we're like, "Yes, that's it. That's it." Okay. Uh, are there any other questions for our lovely chaps? Um, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.